What does that mean? This is uh, like a centralized location to be able to pull up these records. And then if something goes wrong, they need to challenge it. A little bit more. I could put that there. Think back to last week's class. Limited liability for limited liability companies. You all look more tired than Saturday. to ensure that um, you're covered in the event of anything is anything and to ensure that the company is mm -hmm. covered mm -hmm. in the event that there's a problem. And, right. And so if you talk about protection, which is what you're talking about, mm -hmm. in the event something happens, what documents need to be in when she started in this that's why I said this was vague. The and the centralized data. What 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 documents need to be Protect it and make sure it's recorded in order to protect the shareholders and the directors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The minutes, that's one of them. The minutes, right? The minutes, the resolution, the records, the registers, the, the registers. You know what my shorthand means, right? Yeah. Yes? Members and shareholders, directors and officers. officers. The second reason is for statutory, regulatory, and legal compliance. What do you think that means? Good night. What does that mean? To ensure statutory, legal, regulatory. Oh, you didn't read it from the beginning? No, I just oh. like it was a button. Yeah, <laughs> this is why. Yeah. To ensure that the company meets all the, mm -hmm. the, the, the statutory requirements by law. By, by law. law. By right. Law. By law. And we're going to go through these in a minute. Let's mm -hmm. say by law. Third one is to allow the shareholders to inspect. What's required there? The registers. Is it allow the shareholders? Mm-hmm. Corporate documents. Corporate documents. Properly and adequately. So what are we talking about here? Wouldn't it be these? Documents. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Those right from here. Mm -hmm. I put a tick here and a tick here. And what else?
for to fully document the shareholders, directors, and officers of a company and their due diligence information. What do you think is required there? What's required right there? Hmm? The registration. The registration members. You already have this. That's the corporate document. We but here the requirement uh, for due diligence. So what are you talking about? The KYC. The KYC. Yes, yeah. the KYC. Which includes? Um, Verification of identity. identity. So you want the passport. Passport, it's mm -hmm. Proof of, proof, of proof of address. Yeah. What else? Um, resume for some people. The resume is? Bank reference. Source of wealth. Bank reference. Source of wealth for the shareholders. Um, character reference. Mm -hmm. Verification of cap status? Yeah. Anything else? Um, source of initial funding, like if the company's going to bring in money. No, we're talking about, uh, what are you talking about? Shareholders, shareholders directors, directors, and, and officers. Officers requirements, okay. You're missing something. Passport, verification of address, we have utility bill, or it could be a lease agreement, resume, bank reference, source of wealth, if they are a shareholder, mm -hmm. character reference, verification of the PEP status, and one more thing. Begins with C. No. Three words. No. I have resume, it could resume or CV. One more thing. No. Are you filling in the blank? <laughs> We're talking about the same point right here. Certificate of income. No. Money. That's for a company. That's for individual individuals. Compliance. No. That's for company too. No clue. No clue. Man, you lost me on that one. Um. Conflict of interest? Yes. Oh. Declaration of any conflict of interest. Oh, okay. I would have never thought Oh, you mean like, like if they yeah, have shares in another company yes. or... They're on another they board. Declare, okay. they're on another yes. Board. Okay. Got it? Uh, okay. Man, I was so far from that. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> this channel does the place certificate of information. No. no <laughs> We're talking about individual you, stuff. I know, I just want to Mm-hmm. And the last one is to represent current and accurate information on the company, its corporate and financial affairs, and the shareholding. Five. What's required there? What records you need to reflect that? The fifth one. Of accurate information. Mm -hmm. Represent current and accurate information on the corporate and financial affairs and shareholding of the company. What documents you need for that? You need the financials. 
What else? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Annual return, annual statement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't mind me writing upside down. What else? See how easy this is becoming? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why are you saying that so loud? From last class? She had transfer, she had transfer register. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Statutory, regulatory, and legal. Oh. What do you call stuff like Bloomberg? Hmm? Bloomberg and stuff like any of the publicly listed. You mean the company? Yeah. Some, Some little. Them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can get you can get a certificate of good standing from different places. Depends on what you want it for. Okay. If you want to know if the company is in good standing with the registrar. Then you get it from the registrar general. Okay. So in some companies here, we go to the registrar physically, and then they prepare a letter. In some countries, they have the registrar online. Oh, so same, same, so right, same thing. So yeah. long as the, the, all the statutory requirements are up to date and everything is paid for, it's on the registry. Okay. And it actually gives you automatically the names of the directors, the officers, when they were appointed, okay. and who's the beneficial owner, all on one sheet. And in some countries, it's free. What is AS again? I'm sorry. Where are they? Annual statement. Annual statement. So now let's look at what is required statutorily for a company and an IBC. Because you have all of this here, but you need to know what's required statutorily and what is done as a matter of practice. And all that has to do with keeping records. And to make this easy, this is what I normally do. Decide take company, decide take IBC. Going through this legislation, you have it. What is the first statutory requirement? Under the Companies Act, on this side, under the IBC Act. What's the first statutory requirement? Must have a registered office. A registered office. So, here and here, yes. section. You have the Companies Act, they have the IBC Act. So give me the section. <laughs> 17 for a Companies Act? She knows this, I told you all last week, prepare for her. Under the IBC Act? What's the section under the IBC Act? You don't have your act? Mm -hmm. uh, four. Not part, those section. Uh, section 27. 27? 37. Okay, let's go. I have to find my new one. What are all these numbers? What are you here? Seven, seven. Hold on, let me find mine. Not page, I want section. Section 37. 
That's my new one over here. Okay, here. Say what? Yeah, it's in the book. Why won't you look at from the book? Why don't you look from the act? Huh? She's an IBC on this side, company on this side. Oh, we're supposed to be in company? Yes, you're in company. Okay, so the Yes, where is it required in law? Is one thing knowing that something is required and never looking up to see if it's actually required by law. Okay. Or required by law. Okay. Yes, where is it required by law for an IBC to have a registered office? The company is in section 17. Right, so where is it in the IBC Act? 37. 37 and IBC. Okay. What about registered agent? 38. Companies Act? Yeah, the companies. No, the IBC is 37 for registered office and 38 for registered agent. What is it under the Companies Act? Companies? Go ahead. This is for memo and arts. Registered office. So that's the wrong. Registered office under. Register. No, but see the numbers change. We just oh, got the amended one. Okay, okay. Well, you don't have it, eh? You have it? I think so. Mm -hmm. so yeah, amended no, it is. Yeah. We could just call it up a month. Is it the latest yeah, one? Yeah, I got mine. Sometimes. Let me see yours. You remember mine came from online too, and it was the wrong one. No, I'm not my dad. No, she's not my dad. Oh, I'm saying you wanted one. Oh, okay. You didn't want it. Oh, you want she have an amendment one. Mm -hmm. We could copy it before. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the one that copied it. We can put it in the machine. Yeah, I'll copy it as well. Just some um, companies, right? You need both, eh? She needs both. Okay. I copied them afterwards. Okay. Oh, okay. you want me to let Mama do it now? Okay. Yeah, let me let Mama do it now. So she knows sections of it. No, yeah, know she know a lot of them. Come, what happened? Over here, is it a registered agent required? Under the company's act? <laughs> what you want? <laughs> oh, you don't, she don't have her RSA. Come on, company people. What's your question? Yeah, 50 cents. You can borrow mine. 50. Oh, <laughs> Long time. Long time. Right, this is an office. I still need. I don't see that. Look inside the table. Look on them. It should be to the beginning. I have registered office. For you to look at the agent, right? Yeah, it should be um right next. Yeah, I did look at the agent. next to it. Look. Hold on, I just go straight through. You should have that one section. You found it? Is a registered agent required for a company? Incorporated under the Companies Act. Am I hearing nothing? No. What else is required statutorily? Yeah, it's not applicable. What else is required? Um, Go back to what was on the board. Saying, um, the register? The register of... Or the M&A. Yes. The M&A yes. person. Okay. The m and is... What section? Um, I hear somebody we in the sprint. <laughs> <laughs> Memorandum is the 13th. 13, section 13 for IBCs. Uh-huh. For M and A? 14 for articles. So it's 
divide it over here. Five. Five. Five, and five, six. five and six. Five and six. Five and seven. Well, five for the memorandum. Companies with Companies limited liabilities. liabilities and memorandum of companies with unlimited liabilities. Mm -hmm. A memorandum of companies with limited by guarantee. That's five, six, and seven. Five, six, and seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we know statutorily we need the register of members. Mm -hmm. Register members is 56 for us. Over here. This is going to the table of contents. <laughs> <laughs> But you had yours. Your yeah, but I didn't bring it. Oh, you didn't bring it in. So how come they don't need a register at all? A registered agent. Who? Oh. What does that mean? The company, sir? Because we don't have a couple of them. Mm-hmm. What's the purpose of a registered agent? IDC Act, what does it say? What's the purpose of a registered agent? The mm -hmm. so, who so who keeps the records here? For well, the company the records. Mm -hmm. The company itself. The company itself yeah. and its corporate secretary. Okay. Can you say that again? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, but this one is saying a company should at all times have a registered office in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go to the agent so, now. The agent is that the company shall at all times have a registered agent in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. So because remember now, this IBC is a flexible creature. Mm -hmm. These people don't live here. But in, so in order to say you have incorporated a company in the Bahamas, you have to have an office in the Bahamas with someone who is filing all of your statutory documents. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of the agent. Mm -hmm. The agent files your documents for you. Whereas when it is a company, your corporate secretary or your attorney files your documents for you. Yeah, because your business could be operating in another jurisdiction. So in this one, yeah, you yeah, operate in another IDC, jurisdiction. But you could have a registered agent. It has to be in the Bahamas. Yeah. The purpose of the registered office, registered agent, is to solidify that it is a Bahamian licensed company. Because the only thing this person does who owns it is they carry around their incorporation document and their Certificate of good standing to say this is my company. This is what they use as evidence. Okay. That's it. And they travel all around the world with it. Mm -hmm. But all of the corporate documents are kept here the in the agent. register office with the agent. Okay. And they pay a fee for the agent to do all of their statutory filings so they're not struck off. Okay. What about over here? What happened here? IBC? Register of members? Isn't that required? I could change this wording. Okay, so a comp the section 29 is saying a company shall, the IBC, cause to be kept at its registered office one or more registers to be known as the share registers, mm -hmm. containing the names and addresses of those persons holding, who hold sh registered shares in the company. Mm -hmm. So it's a requirement. Okay. And that in the case of a company limited by guarantee, the term share register shall mean register of members in which shall be entered the names and addresses of the members of such company. Okay. So that's section 29. Mm -hmm. Annual statement. Annual statement and what's the purpose of it? And how is it different from an annual return? I don't think that's required for an IBC. Right? No. No, mm -hmm. the annual statement. I'm trying to record that. Only the 1992. I forgot here. Um, Where is the record? Yeah. An officer. I don't 
10. Section 567 and Articles of Association okay. is 10. Sorry. So Register of Directors and Authors is Section 44 for the IBC. Mm -hmm. And under the Companies Act, Register of Directors and Officers. Fifty-six? Yeah. Fifty-six? That's member. That's member. Is it fifty-six? Subsection five? Yes. Double check. Because remember when I wrote it, I had the old one. Oh, yeah. Directors, I think. No, we're looking for documents. Go there and read. See what it says. Fifty-six. You found it? Nothing talks about directors. Oh, yeah. You want to look in the back, yeah? Or there's the IBC? No? Um, section 3, 56, section 3. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. 56. Let's see that it changed the years. Yeah, but I look and see. Yeah, they do. They have a register still? I thought of yeah, they have a register. They still have a register. Uh -huh. They have to file. They actually have a register that they file here. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. under the IBC is section 44. So we need to find it under the Companies Act, unless it was deleted. Was it deleted? Under the Companies Act. Okay, annual statement and annual return under the Companies Act. And what's the difference between the two? Statement section 80. Oh, no, you found it? Yeah. Oh, she yeah. found it. Number four. That's remuneration. No. Well, this is a director's Yeah, director's but that's, yeah, but this is talking about the uh, duty. Oh, no, That's when there's an arrow. So go 58 is the annual return. I can look up directors, but you know on Saturday. 58. Yeah. So what's the purpose of the annual statement? I'll look this one up. I think the annual statement I just say. Annual statement? No. To declare the, 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 to declare the directors. Mm -hmm. um, also to declare who the shareholders are and how many shares they hold. It's a front and a back. Uh -huh. So yeah. at so the, the very top, it indicates the shareholders. The shareholders, shareholders. first. 
here it tells you any shares that were transferred. Mm, okay. I got it from this. Here it gives you the listing of the officers and directors. They're still on the front? Back. Oh, nice. And has the company seal on it. Right up here has the company number and name, front and back. That's what it looks like. And that's done annually. The shareholders, who are the shareholders, the number of shares that they hold. Here, any shares that were transferred at the back, it gives you the listing of the officers and the directors with their addresses, the names and the addresses and the position. Name, address, and position. Mm -hmm. And the company seal, and, 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 the, and the seal by the company. So the back has the offices and directors. Mm -hmm. Name, address, and position. And the company seal. So the annual return is a document which um, lists how much percentage is held by every union and how much percentage is held and by And what section that is? Under the Companies Act. What's this section here? Annual statement. What's the section? I just show it to you. Yeah, 58, so 58. And you said the annual statement is filed annually. They're all annual. Annually, at a particular time of the year, mm -hmm. January, January. The act tells you no. Where does it say? Don't don't say the first. What does it say? It's after, after the after fourteen the, days after, after the AGM. Okay, fourteen mm -hmm. days after the AGM. Filed annually, fourteen days. So that depends on when they have the AGM. Mm -hmm. You know, we have it around January. Okay. After the AGM. Yeah. yeah. See. That's the statement we're talking about. This yeah, one here, the annual, statement. annual statement, is this one. This one here, 59, which is the annual return. Uh -huh. This one here is the one that's done on the first of each year. And the statement is 14 days after the AGM. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And the other one was the beneficial ownership. That's done on the first of the year. The annual return. Mm -hmm. This is done on the first. The beneficial ownership. That's normally just a, a letter. So that can be filed at any time. Which one? Annually, the annual return. Or the first, the of, first January. of January. Okay, I didn't get that. I'm sorry. First of January. So what else do we have to file statutorily? Um, for the IBCs, you have to file mm -hmm. the declaration of, no, you don't have to file it. For IBC or company? Mm -hmm. This is company. Yeah. Okay. Now, what's required over here? We said not applicable. Statutory. Is that correct? No. Which one? For the IBC. IBC. For the annual return? Is there an annual return? No. I don't remember that being an annual Under the IBC Act? No. You don't have, have to file an annual statement or annual return. What do you file? You file a declaration mm -hmm. of oh. availability of account oh. of accounting records. Okay. And what's the section? Um, I can't remember the section, but I know there was an amendment for 2006 in 2016. And it says that it must be available to the registered agent. Is that yearly or just one? One. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's just one. Once it's been incorporated, you just have to declare that once. Yeah. 
one. But that should be in that. Is it in the new, in the amended one? Declaration of availability of accounting records to be kept at registered office. It's the International Business Company's Accounting Records Order 2016. Yeah. I don't see that. This one, yeah, this one is 2010, so that wouldn't be. No, it's not in there. So you have to add this to that. What does this need to add to? What does it say? This is the requirement to keep the accounting records. Are we confirming that we're going to keep yeah. the required documents mm -hmm. at the registered office. office? That's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. What's it called? It's and just a declaration. The declaration. The declaration of availability of accounting records. A company should keep at its registered office a declaration stating that A, the company is maintaining reliable accounting records, and B, the accounting records shall be made available to its registered agent. So this is in conjunction to your IBC app. We can copy, we can copy that. that. Like you copy it. Oh, sorry. Okay. So if I put the order here, right, for declaration, and this is file once a year, right? Of accounting it records. No, I don't say file. Just one. Say keep it. Mm -hmm. Should be maintained. Because it's to send back to the registrar. No. no. You just get like no ECDA. <laughs> no. You just have to declare it and keep it on you the file. Declare it and keep it on file. I'm not going to send it. Yes, please. But so what's the equivalent over here in the company's act for this? Um, I think it's declaration of. You sure? No, under the no, Companies no, Act? Not What's required under the Companies Act? Here you're saying under the IBC Act that they have to have a declaration kept at the registered um, office. This don't mm -hmm. keep, this go to but the registrar. Yeah, go to the registrar. Just go to the registrar. The this says this. See, right there. And you have 60 days. I thought it was 90. Every time you register the registered agent, Shall submit a copy of the declaration, or just a declaration. Yeah. yeah. Just, just a document, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but not the yeah. actual yeah. Just records. Just no. just the records yeah. will be made, okay. Just a, not the records, just that. Just the declaration. Yeah. The declaration. Oh, yeah. And the 60 days. Them, you make sure send the records within 70 When you incorporate the company you, and you appoint your director. 90 days. It's 90 days, right? 90 days. Yeah, it's just a one-time But it's not filed, is it? Unless they amended the domain act to include this, there's no so. penalty here. Mm -hmm. I didn't find anything. No, it's just no. been that. Because before, it was in 2013, mm -hmm. where you just had to say it would be on file, made available, and then and they then made going additional, forward, they yeah. made additional changes that mm -hmm. has to be filed yearly. Or mm -hmm. just file at that time, and no. the company's incorporated then. It, was, it used to be a declaration where you would just say that you will you will have accounting records. You will maintain the accounting records, and then they, I think they amended it to say that you, it will be made available to the registered agent. So this is one time? Yeah, it's just a one time. It's one time. If you were in existence um, from 2013, you had 60 days. If you came in existence after the scheme defect 2016, you had 90 days. That's it. Only I think you it only 90, changes if, if the registered agent changes. And then the they registered have to agent file changes, it. then they have to file it. But it's a yeah. one time thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That you have accounting records. Okay. So you want to copy this? Yeah. Okay. No. So this is a one time mm -hmm. thing. So for this one, um, we would have that as IBC order two thousand and sixteen. Yeah. Just just cite it. So what's required over here in the company's act? Ms. Archer's question. Hey. Uh, mm -hmm. When you were here and you wrote the beneficial ownership, why did you write that? You wrote that as a requirement for the company? Uh, Where? Or right there where you said 1st of January, then you wrote beneficial ownership. Yeah, that's what this is about. No, you wrote that to say this is enough, like how we have annual return, annual statement, the beneficial That is ownership. this. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Uh-huh. Okay. That's what it means. Okay, I 
Yiddy dum 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 dum. Who was who? That's you. That's you. What's required over here for a company? Accounting records. Come on, go and read it again. For a for a company. For a company. Mm -hmm. We require the key audited financials. Audited financials. Mm -hmm. Subject to this section, the directors of a company shall place before the members at every annual general meeting of the members of the company comparative financial statements in the full <coughs> form relating separately to the period that began on the date of the company came into existence and ended not more than 12 months after, B, the report of the auditors, and C, any further information respecting the financial position of the company and the results of this operation. The section is again 118. 118. So that's annual audited financial statements. Mm -hmm. That is to be presented at the AGM. You do it first at the board and, and the then board. at the AGM. Mm -hmm. What else is statutorily required? statutorily required. Mm. Remember we said at the very beginning to ensure limited liability protection for limited liability companies. What about insurance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Insurance on both sides. Does the legislation provide for protection of directors okay, and officers? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes, okay, so IBC alcohol and demonstration mm -hmm. is section 58, and insurance is section 59. And what does it say? Uh, for 58 and damnification, it says subject to subsection 2 and any limitations in its memorandum or articles mm -hmm. or in any. Um, unanimous shareholder agreement. A company may indemnify against all expenses, including legal fees, and against all judgments, fines, and amounts paid in settlement and reasonable incurred in connection with legal or administrative proceedings. Any person who is a is or was a party, or is threatened to be made a party to a any threatened pending or completed proceeding. Whether civil or administrative by reason of the fact that the person is or was a director, an officer, or a liquidator of the company, or or any person who is or was at the request of the company serving as a as a director, officer, or liquidator, or in any other capacity is or was acting for another company or a partnership, joint venture, trust, or other enterprise. That's indemnification. Mm -hmm. And insurance. A company may purchase and maintain insurance yeah. in relation to any person who is or was a director, a registered agent, an officer, or liquidator of the company, or who at the request of the company is or was serving as a director or registered agent or an officer. So, what does the company act say? This is for director, officer, or registered agent. Section 
What is it? Uh, it's accepted respect of an action by or on behalf of a company or boy corporate to obtain a judgment in its favor. A company may indemnify a director or officer of the company, a former director or officer of the company, or a person who acts or acted at the company's request as a director or officer of a body corporate of which the company is or was a member or creditor, and is legal representatives against all costs, charges, and expenses, including an amount paid to settle an action or satisfy a judgment, reasonably incurred by him in respect of any civil, criminal, or administrative action proceeding to which he is made a party by reason of being or having been a director or officer of that company or body, co body corporate. Okay, and so what about insurance? company made with the approval of the uh, insurance? Mm -hmm. For insurance under the Companies Act. Is there any provision statutory for insurance? Mm -hmm. Is there a section here? This one's not in the Because the IBC had a section on insurance very clear. Yeah. The company may purchase oh, and maintain insurance. Also the liquidator too. Or the liquidator. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. I'll put There's no liquidator mentioned here in this liability. Now let's see what it says for insurance. Is there a provision for insurance statutorily? You're looking, you found it? You love it? That's what she said, the CC plan, he didn't sound in here, she don't know. If, um, if, it's, if the registered agent isn't, if the registered agent isn't applicable, they still need liabilities. One there. One seventeen. Huh? If the registered agent is not applicable, they still need to be covered on the liability. No, no, no. Here? I mean, for the this company. Uh huh. This is not agent in terms oh, of registered agent. It's someone who acts as an agent oh, on behalf company. of the company. Okay. Someone who acts as an agent. You see it, 117? Close, close to here. Right here. That's right here. No? It's so close you missed it. Right here. And so you saw when we did this here. This here, declaration, and then we say here, the statutory required to produce annual statements, read 117A, under the Companies Act. Okay. 117A. Okay. Obligation to maintain accounting records. A company see? shall cause reliable accounting records to be kept in Sounds the same. This is to produce it, this is to maintain it. That you mean just keeping it on file, right? What? 17 is to produce 17 it. 17 is just to keep it on file? 17 is to make sure that the information is it's accurate there. on file. Oh, okay. okay. 118 means that you must have audited financials. Okay. Remember, not all companies are required to have audited financials. Mm -hmm. When you go around the world, mm -hmm. a company could be incorporated but they don't have to produce audited financials mm -hmm. because the legislation has required them to do it. Mm -hmm. Once you incorporate it under the Companies Act, you are required to produce this. Then you also have an obligation <coughs> to make sure that the information is reliable and accurate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I'll try and find for you for next week to, to solidify this record keeping if I can find a good article on Enron, so you can see the responsibility of having reliable and accurate information. Publishing it is one thing, but this is where the penalties are if the numbers are not true and correct.
So IBCs is optional for them to be audited, but it's mandatory for CACs? Yeah, this is a declaration that you have accounting records and that is accurate. Okay. What else is required statutorily? Just remember the IBC is a flexible vehicle and more foreigners use the IBC rather than incorporating the company. That's not just, remember the very first class when we were looking at the difference between a sole proprietorship, a partnership, and incorporating a company and we talk about the cost. But it's more than just the cost. It's also all of the statutory requirements in maintaining a company under the Companies Act and a company under the IBC Act. What else is required statutorily? Um, and IBC have to do their register of mortgages. What's that section? They have to do a register of mortgages. Try the 30s. Don't worry, there's no question on exam that asks you to quote the section. Please. I'm <laughs> sure I'm telling you it's so when you got it, I when mean, you I use it, you know notes it's there. As a practical, you know where to look for things. Mm -hmm. But I don't ask you for no section. Because mm -hmm. as you can see, it changes. Mm -hmm. Once you put an amendment in, the number's incorrect. I so it don't make no sense you memorizing it. But I want you to get familiar as to where to find it. Mm -hmm. And how the, the differences between the two. Okay, so what else is required under the Companies Act? Are there any other registers they have to keep? So this mortgage is just the optional, they mean re optional registration of mortgages and charges. Because they have mortgages and charges of shares, 36 mm -hmm. And then 36C, they have optional registration of mortgages and charges. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so 36B is speaking about the register itself, okay, which is, they may elect to, you don't have to, it's an election. B, I mean C, is speaking about a company incorporated may submit to the registrar for registration any document creating a mortgage, which is like the mortgage deed. Mm -hmm. So two different things. Oh, yeah, the support. Okay. So the first one is the rest of register. Uh -huh. of all your oh, mortgages no, and charges. Okay. And and C is the actual mortgage document. Okay, so okay, it is so, still, so it should be 36 A then the registrar. Okay. The registrar, yeah. C will be the actual mortgage. register in the actual mortgage. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So any time a company um, is in agreement for a mortgage, they have to file with the registry. They have to register it. A mortgage of shares or shares or charge of shares of a company, the company is made, must be in writing by a bit authority of the register holder of the shares <laughs> to which the mortgage or charge is related. I don't with the registrar. Okay. The register holder of the share. It's who's holding the shares. Not the registrar general. And see, it says here, if no law specified to govern a mortgage of shares or charge of shares incorporated under this act, the instrument creating the mortgage of the charge shall be governed by the laws of the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. But that's not this. Can it say you have the option of maintaining a register? Yes, you may elect. Mm -hmm. Same thing, say you may. 
Yeah. So May is May is the option. May is not mandatory. Shall mean you must. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Anything else? Remember what I kept saying in all of the classes. This is what the OECD is after now. Okay. This. Beneficial ownership. Couple things. Register <laughs> of beneficial ownership and they want it open. They just send out the draft legislation on this for comments. Mm -hmm. And the second thing they want is what? They want two things. Um, oh, what they call it? <coughs> economic presence in the Bahamas. Um. An economic presence in the Bahamas is looking at the taxation of a regular company versus the taxation of an IBC. Um, yeah, because they don't tax. They don't tax them. They don't tax IBCs. A foreigner no. can come in and have business and don't be taxed. Right. They're not taxed on their business. Here you are tax on your business. How you tax? As a company, how you tax? How will your government? Uh, not the government fees, mm? but annual, annual fees. fees. The annual fees. Annual fees. Yeah. annual fees under the Business License Act. Based upon what category you fall under, right? Over here, what fees do you pay? Just government fees. Just to maintain the company. Just the fees to maintain the company. For nothing. For if, if you have an operation anywhere, they don't charge you for it. So you have this fee you pay the government. You have rental. You have employees. And VAT. You pay VAT. You pay NIB. You pay all those fees. So many Yeah. And, but NHI is for mm -hmm. employee only. Eh? Yeah. Um, yeah. But over here, you just maintain your fees here with this person. This is just your filing fees. You pay them because you have an agreement here. And they pay your annual fee. That's it. So these are the two things that they're looking at. Who owns these? And they need economic presence in the Bahamas. And that's annual fee, whether it's RGD or SUV or Central Bank. Which one? Right, for IBCs. For IBCs? Yeah. 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 But they're still That's all annual fees. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. they don't have a physical presence here. They don't have an office with staff and desk and table and driver. They don't have those things. Okay. So that's what they're saying. They're looking at what is the income the Bahamas is getting from these okay. commensurate to the volume of business and what are we getting from these. And they say it's not a level playing field. They say we need to have one corporate taxation, not put the off these non-residents separate from these companies that are resident. Yes. So that's what they're looking at. Any other statutory requirements by law on either side? Because this is all this is all that a business at IBC has to do is the registered agent with yes pay whatever fee is required for the licenses. Here, you have all of these documents to submit, in addition to paying all the fees. So it's much more. Are and it costs more. Um, winding up, if you have to, you're required to... Um, you're required to submit documents for... The solution. Yeah, we'll do the winding up and we do the last chapter on winding up. Okay. We leave them separate. That looks about it, right? I think mm -hmm. so. So when I ask you a question of which records are required to be kept by an IBC for statutory purposes, you could answer that, right? Mm -hmm. 
Jesus. You got that. <laughs> you got that, right? I got that one. Okay. Yeah. That's an easy one. And that's normally answered in bullet point form. Okay. okay. They don't have to explain that. You just write those mm -hmm. straight up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't need an so explanation. You have to do it in the morning. Like one for company, one for company. What about this one? The common seal. Maybe both are either. What about yeah. this common seal? There you go. The common seal. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. It's just okay. They said a company All right. Section 67 says the company shall have a common seal and imprint thereof shall be kept at the registered office of the company. Mm -hmm. And it's under the company's act too. Mm -hmm. What's the seal? The 67. Oh, what's the seal over here? Uh -huh. oh, In the sorry. company's act. 26. So there shouldn't be a need looking at what's on the board for some of that. This question to give me three points. And in this one, one says, on in this section here, it says, too, a company shall keep such financial statements, accounting records at the directors consider necessary or desirable in order to reflect the financial position of the company. So like you said, it doesn't say it has to be part of it. No. Mm -mm. So that'll be the part with this. 67. Goes with this. Mm -hmm. What was your question? No, it was saying if you read this? 67, it also <coughs> goes with section so it's 67. You see? To be specific, the seal, section it speaks to the one, seal one, for 67, to go with 67, clause 3. Section 67, clause 3 is the seal. And then mm -hmm. section 67, 1 and 2 speaks to the financial statements and account and records. 67. For the seal? Uh huh, clause one and two. And then for the seal is 67, clause three. Three, okay. And what's for the seal over in the Companies Act? 26. 26. And in other jurisdictions, there's no requirement for these. Really? Yeah. Only you? So basically, what I need to do is go to the whole app and just highlight child. <laughs> I heard somebody say that before. Yeah. Because you have to know what's mandatory. Yeah, just whatever the shall And what the company has an option mm -hmm. not to do. Mm -hmm. All right. So well, that chapter is done. Well, I was fine. Yes. But there's a lot of information in it. Yeah. Option and shall is what's marked. Yes. Section 118. Okay. And again, I must thank you all for switching. Because I didn't even think about it. I just was saying, okay, that's what we're doing today. Not realizing that the next one was so long. Hey, someone of my papers. <laughs> Both. This one on the IBC app. I'm not erasing the board. You want me to copy this for you now? <laughs> no? Or we can do it on Saturday. Okay, Saturday? Okay. I'll print it before you come. Yes. Huh? No, 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 no. You'll have them not this Saturday, the following Saturday. They will be ready. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Hey, and the supplement on that day, too, if necessary. Yes. Whenever you're ready, just let Miss Dean know. Okay. Yeah. You can do it this week. Me call you back. I guess. I think in the night. Go down and tell her now which day you come in. That'll be good. So we can move on.
a sample of the annual statement I could share with the class who's not doing that. Okay. But it, yeah. it shows a, a good layout. Oh, it's just like a dummy one. one. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. You too. You know, I like to clean the board. I don't like to leave it to you. I know, that's why I was trying to get. Okay, so this party, um, okay. You should be surprised. How many people get this question wrong? To represent the place. Okay. You'd be surprised how many people, this is a giveaway question, there's one question you know you can always get right, people always get it wrong. Put it break down and simple how you do the chart. Yeah, rather than yeah. all of the words, but I can't put it in the notes as a chart. Yeah.